Recently, a video came out from a guy called Dustin Eden, and that video was about the top 100 best rated racing games by Metacritic. And let me tell you, the video is a trip. I definitely recommend it, but during the video, the topic of NASCAR pops up occasionally, and I cannot lie, I was severely triggered by the way he waved off each individual NASCAR entry as just the same game. Dude, I feel so stupid because I haven't played any of these, man. I haven't played any of these. I haven't played any of these. It doesn't really look much different than the game I looked at before. How, how are these games supposed to differ? Someone please explain the differences between these. Okay, this sure sounds like a job for Kamikaze Games. Today we're going to discuss the main differences between several popular NASCAR games, specifically the ones listed in the video. The reason I'm making this is because it was incredibly frustrating to sit through those previous clips. Dustin Eden is a guy who obviously knows a lot about racing games, and the idea of racing games in general. In fact, he has his own justified rant in the middle of the video about journos that rated Gran Turismo 4 poorly. If you play this and GT3 back to back and you, you, you barely see any improvement, you're blind, man. Clearly he understands the nuanced differences between the very similar Gran Turismo's 3 and 4. But suddenly this reasonable position is completely miffed in regards to NASCAR games. Well, get, 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 get down to the nitty gritty then. What makes all of these NASCAR games different from each other? The answers may shock you. NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup versus NASCAR Thunder 2004. Okay, I've actually wanted to talk about this ever since finishing the NASCAR 2005 career mode playthrough, so this is actually perfect. NASCAR 2005 and NASCAR 2004 differ in way more ways than you'd think, despite releasing one year apart and having a nearly identical graphics engine, these games have vastly different core content. In Thunder 2004, you have one series, the Cup Series, to play in. Everyone drives Cup cars, even drivers from the Bush Series, everyone is in the same cars. In 2005, however, there are five completely different types of cars to choose from. You still have the Cup Series, which drives a lot like it did in Thunder 2004, but you also have the B-League NASCAR Series, the Bush Series, as its own playable race mode. I know it's not technically a race mode, but for the sake of, you know, simplifying all this, we're just gonna call it race mode. In Thunder 2004, these drivers were lumped in with the Cup Series, but now they have their own standalone races with just that specific roster to race with and against. That's not where it ends either. I'm not done yet! The other three playable race modes have the Truck Series, the Featherlight Modifieds, and the final type is the Production Cars. This is the only NASCAR game to my knowledge that has a production car race mode, by the way. It is a feature that is 100% unique to this game and this game only. These aren't just superficial changes, by the way. Each and every series drives its own way. Bush series has less power than the Cup series, making the cars easier to drive. Modifieds have a far tighter steering radius, making them some of the fastest cars in the game at times. I really could go on and on about the key differences between Thunder 2004 and Chase for the Cup 2005, but we'd be here all day. So let's just move on to the next game on the list, NASCAR Racing 2003 season. NASCAR Thunder 2004 versus NASCAR Racing 2003 season. Now this is where I was scratching my head the hardest while watching back the original video, and it's not because I have lice. It's literally just that frustrating to watch this section of the video. What's different about this one than the last one we checked out? I don't know, man. This game, even at a glance, looks absolutely nothing like the EA games that we discussed earlier. The only similarities is that NR 2003 and Thunder 2004 released the same year, meaning all the cars have the same paint schemes. That much is true, but even someone who doesn't know anything about NASCAR would be able to look at these two screenshots side by side and immediately recognize they are completely different games. So where do I even begin with listing the differences between NR 2003 and the EA games? Once you get past anything completely superficial, you are going to know the answer pretty much instantaneously. 
NASCAR Thunder 2004 is more akin to a Need for Speed style arcade racer when you look at the fundamentals of how the game drives. NR 2003, on the other hand, is the mother of all stock car racing simulators. This is the Gran Turismo of NASCAR gaming. The game is best experienced with a force feedback racing wheel and pulls absolutely no punches, whereas Thunder 2004 is obviously best experienced with the PS2 controller. NASCAR Thunder 2004 is not an easy game, as much as us in the NASCAR gaming YouTube community would make it out to be. NASCAR Gaming YouTube Community. That's a lot of words, kamikaze. The game is very accessible for a reason. It was made by EA, and it was marketed towards casual gamers. The game has plenty of assists that make the game easier to play, and when you turn them off for the first time, yeah, it's gonna take some time to get used to it. But once you learn how to drive a one track, you can pretty confidently assume you'll be able to get used to all of the tracks. NR2003 exists in an entirely different plane from really any console-based NASCAR game, especially from all the way back in 2003. Even with the limited driving assists turn on, you're going to need to not only learn how to race, but completely learn how to drive, period. I actually really don't like driving in NR2003. The, the driving model is kind of painful. I actually prefer iRacing, even though I hate iRacing. You will need to learn a proper racing technique. You will need to learn racing lines. You will need to learn how to hold a straight wheel. Honestly, if anyone ever tells you that NASCAR is just about turning left for four hours, put them behind the wheel of an NR Sim and tell them to go out and drive. In fact, I encourage everyone to do exactly that. NR2003 has been abandoned where since 2018, which means that while it's technically not legal to pirate the game, no one's gonna stop you. I recommend anyone who's watching this find a copy of this game in whatever manner you see fit. And it doesn't stop there either. Let's actually get back to comparing the games. NASCAR Thunder 2004 has a car setup screen. Yeah, it is a professional racing game after all. I can't lie, I was afraid of this screen as a kid. <laughs> I literally had no idea what I was looking at, and I was afraid that if I touched anything at all, I would never win again. Yeah, now let's compare this screen with NR2003's setup screen. Yeah, like I said, these two games cater to completely different audiences. NR2003 is absolutely the most hardcore NASCAR simulator you will ever encounter. And NASCAR Thunder 2004 is absolutely the best game that combines accessibility with quality. I know that more NASCAR games pop up on this list besides the three that we've discussed so far, but the it's the same game argument actually almost applies. I've literally never played NASCAR Racing 4, but NR2002 is almost the exact same game as NR2003. NR2002 is obviously just weaker as a whole in the physics department, and the modding ability is severely limited, but for the purposes of this video, mods are kind of irrelevant. And actually, I guess that's kind of where this video comes to an end. I feel like I've been able to demonstrate the fundamental differences between the three NASCAR games that I know the most about in Dustin Eden's video. Obviously, the differences between the games don't end there, as Dirt to Daytona was released a year before NR 2003 and Thunder 2004, which is an entirely different take on NASCAR, and I'm really disappointed it wasn't on the list, just to add another perspective for Dustin Eden to see. Then, of course, there's the Dark Age of NASCAR gaming, from NASCAR 08 to the game 2011. Then there's Heat Evolution, unfortunately. The list goes on and on, but that's not the point of this video. I hope that my autistic obsession of NASCAR games from the year 2003 didn't make anyone too uncomfortable, but I really felt like I needed to make this video, if anything, just to get some frustrations from Chase for the Cup 2005 off my chest. You know, what really pisses me off is how the entire 10th anniversary series of game reviews was spawned from the script that I wrote for Chase for the Cup 2005, and that video was terrible and I sucked the game off as hard as I could when, in reality, it was actually a disappointment compared to the prior game. Maybe a re-review is needed someday. Anyway, whatever, this video's gone on way long enough. Thank you so much for watching this, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you check out everything else that I make on this channel. Please buy my album, that's all. Thanks for watching, have a good day.
Wait. Oh! Oh, you're supposed to turn and stop. Oh, that is a Suzuki Cappuccino. Oh, no wonder I lost. I was racing against a god car. You're telling me that didn't count? Uh, this is the first license challenge. Mmm, 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 mmm. I'm not sure what that was, but it was weird. 